All right, it's me again. I'm bringing forth a very interesting video. It's one I've been wanting to make for a long time now. And actually, I've recorded a couple of sessions, but for some reason or another, they didn't went through. I don't know if that's a sign that I should bring this information forth at a later time. Or well, don't bring it at all, but I feel it's important. And it's not a teaching, it's just something I want to share with my viewers. And it has to do with the Holy Spirit. In this video, I want to discuss the divinity of the Holy Spirit. And contrary to what most people teach or believe, that the Holy Spirit is a it or a he. And I'm here to prove that that's not the case. The Holy Spirit is in fact a she. She is a female divinity of the Heavenly Father. Just like you have Adam and Eve, you know how Eve was pulled from Adam's rib. Well, the same thing with the Holy Spirit. It is the female divinity of the Heavenly Father. He pulled the Holy Spirit out of himself just as he pulled Eve out of Adam. So you have God the Father got his son Yeshua Jesus Christ and the mother spirit the Holy Spirit the Ruach HaKodesh also known as wisdom and I know the churches have made us believe that the Holy Spirit is a it or a he and that's not the case because if you look at it what you have in heaven the father the son and the mom the mother is the same thing we have here on earth which is a blueprint for what we have here on earth. Mom, dad, and the child, right? So it's the same thing in heaven. So remember, on earth as it is in heaven. So with that being said, turn over to the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, and I'm going to read a couple of verses in this chapter. I'm going to begin with verse 20, where it refers to wisdom the Holy Spirit as a she and a her. Our right, verse 20 says, Wisdom cries aloud in the street. She raises her voice in the markets. Verse 21, same thing. She cries at the head of the noisy intersections in the chief gathering places at the entrance of the city gates. She speaks. All right, wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit, it's just another name for the Ruach HaKodesh, which is a Hebrew name for Holy Spirit. It refers to her as a she and a her in these two verses, verses 20 and 21. And I know some like to point to John chapter 14 and verse 26, where it refers to the Holy Spirit as a he. And I want to go over that. I want to look up that word he in the Greek, because the New Testament was written in Greek. And I want to look that word he up in the Greek. And I'm going to prove that that word he is very misleading. It, it can mean various things. He, they, she. And it, basically these two verses, and there's more that I'm going to be going over in this book of Proverbs. Where it talks about uh, the Holy Spirit. How she always existed from the beginning. She was right there with Christ and the Father helping Helping uh, the Father in creation. The things we see today in the universe and here on earth. So, yeah, that word in uh, John chapter 14 and verse 26, that word he can mean various things. And I'm going to expose that word. It's nothing more than a front. And you can read all throughout scripture, particularly Proverbs, the book of Proverbs. <laughs> and the verses that it discusses the Holy Spirit, it refers to her over and over as a she, her, and it outweighs that one word, he, one word reference to the Holy Spirit being a he. But I'm going to save that for another video. In this video, I just want to go over the book of Proverbs, chapters 1, a few verses in chapters 1, a few verses in chapter 3. And I'm going to do the whole chapter 8 of this book of Proverbs in this video. And I'm going to go over a couple more verses in Proverbs chapter 9. So... With that being said, let's carry on. All right, turning over to Proverbs chapter 3, and I'm only going to read verses 15 through 19, because again, this is where it describes wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit, 
as a she and a her, not a he. All right. Okay, I'm sorry, I went over. I skipped one. All right, let me see here. All right, bear with me now. I wasn't set up like I thought I was, but it's okay. Let's see here, man, this thing's giving me a really hard time. Bear with me, please. All right, Proverbs chapter 3 and scrolling down to verses 15 to 19. All right, here it is. Verse 15, it says, Skillful and godly wisdom is more precious than rubies, and nothing you can wish for is to be compared to her. Verse 16, Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honor verse 17 her ways are highways of pleasantness here's that word her again and all her paths are peace verse 18 she is a tree of life to those who lay hold on her and happy blessed fortunate to be envied is everyone who holds her fast verse 19 the Lord, by skillful and godly wisdom, founded the earth. Remember, wisdom is the Holy Spirit. And she embodies skill and godliness. So the Lord, by his skillful and godly wisdom, which the Holy Spirit has, skill and knowledge, the Lord, by her, founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. It's very eye-opening <coughs> to those with eyes to see and ears to hear. Not everyone's going to get it. This is for advanced learners. So all you babes in Christ, you know, it might come to you later on. But anyways, going back up and turning over to... Proverbs chapter 8. Okay, this whole chapter expressively speaks concerning the origin of wisdom, a.k.a. the Holy Spirit, a.k.a. the Ruach HaKodesh. Alright, Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 1 says, Does not skillful and godly wisdom cry out and understanding raise her voice in contrast to the loose women? Verse 2. On the top of the heights, beside the way, where the paths meet, stands wisdom, skillful and godly. Verse 3. At the gates, at the entrance of the town, at the coming in at the doors, she cries out. Verse 4. To you, O man, this is wisdom speaking. This is the Holy Spirit. This is what she says. To you, O man, I call and my voice is directed to the sons of men. Verse 5. O you simple and thoughtless ones, understand prudence, you self-confident fools. Be of an understanding heart. Verse 6. Hear, for I will speak excellent and princely things. And the opening of my lips shall be for right things. Verse 7. For my mouth shall utter truth. And wrongdoing is detestable and loathsome to my lips. Verse 8. All the words of my mouth are righteous, upright, and in right standing with the Heavenly Father. There is nothing contrary to truth or crooked in them. All right, that was verse 8. Verse 9. They are all plain to him who understands and opens his heart. And write to those who find knowledge and live by it. Verse 10. Receive my instruction and preference to striving for silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. So what the Holy Spirit offers, 
which is instruction, is better than silver. And her knowledge that she gives us is better than gold. Amen. Verse 11. For skillful and godly wisdom is better than rubies or pearls. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. So what she offers, skill, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, all these spiritual gifts are better than riches. Why? Because you can't do anything good with riches if you're a fool. Let's say I give an idiot a bunch of wealth. You know, what are they going to do with it? Nothing, nothing worthy of praise, obviously, right? And how can you even get riches if you have no wisdom, no skill, no knowledge, no understanding, which comes from the Holy Spirit. Does, it, does that make sense? All right. Verse 12. I, this is the Holy Spirit, this is she speaking. I, wisdom from God, she came from God. Like I said, just the same way God pulled Eve from Adam, he pulled the Holy Spirit, which is female, the female divinity, pulled her out of himself. So she did not exist on her own. I want to make that clear. The Holy Spirit, even though she's a female, did not exist on her own like God. God pulled the... Some say that God pulled the emotional and compassionate side out of him and thus came about the Holy Spirit, which is the expression of what... Women carry inside the emotional, compassionate, loving side, you know, like a mom. So basically, just it's just like an earthly family, right? If you you have a son and he gets in trouble, right? And obviously, who's the one to discipline him? The dad, right? So, you know, when the dad has to do what he needs to do and whoop his butt, who's there to console and, you know, and uh, comfort the child? The mom, right? Oh, the, don't be so harsh on the kid, you know. It's your son, da da da. That's that's the same pattern you have with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's the same thing you have here on earth. So that's that's how it works. Wisdom came from God, as it says here in verse twelve. Make prudence my dwelling, and I find out knowledge and discretion. Verse thirteen. The reverent fear and worship, worshipful awe of the Lord includes the hatred of evil, pride, arrogance, the evil way, and perverted and twisted speech I hate. Verse 14. I have counsel and sound knowledge. I have understanding, might, and power. Wow. So she, she's in a very high position. She carries a very high office right next to the Father's Son. As it says here in verse 14, she has counsel and sound knowledge, understanding, might, and power. That's what surrounds the mother's spirit, wisdom. Verse 15, by me kings reign and rulers decree justice. Verse 16, by me princes rule and nobles, even all the judges and governors of the earth. And another thing I wanted to mention is that the Holy Spirit, she is like the administrator of the Father and the Son, right? Just like you have in a home. You have a mom, a dad, and you have, let's say, the child, right? Who's the one that um, keeps everything in order? The mom, right? That's what the Holy Spirit is, the administrator. It's like an administrator. And it is the, like I said, the emotional, compassionate side of the Heavenly Father, gentle, loving side, which is the Holy Spirit, a female spirit. Amen? Not many are going to get this, but it's the truth, and I'm here to prove it. Verse 17, I love those who love me. This is what she says. I love those who love me, and those who seek me early and diligently shall find me. Remember... Seek the Lord while he may be found. Seek him through the Mother Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. That's why Christ died on the cross. He said, it is to your benefit if I go away so that the Holy Spirit comes to you. 
Remember, you don't need nobody to teach you anything. The spirit teaches you why. She's the administrator. She carries all the knowledge, the information, the wisdom, the insight, the revelation. She is your guide. She is wisdom. Verse 18, riches and honor are with me, enduring wealth and righteousness, uprightness in every area in relation and right standing with the Heavenly Father. Verse 19, my fruit is better than gold, yes, than refined gold, and my increase than choice silver. So the spiritual gifts she offers, again, are way better than riches, gold and silver. Verse 20, I, wisdom, the mother spirit, walk in the way of righteousness, moral and spiritual rectitude in every area in relation. In the midst of the paths of justice. Verse 21. That I may cause those who love me to inherit true riches and that I may fill their treasuries. Verse 22. The Lord formed. Now pay attention. This is very important. This is the origin of the mother spirit known as wisdom. The Holy Spirit. Verse 22. It says. Again, we're in chapter 8 of the book of Proverbs. Verse 22 says. The Lord formed and brought me. Wisdom, the female spirit, the Lord brought her forth at the beginning of his way before his acts of old. Verse 23, I, wisdom, was inaugurated and ordained from everlasting, from the beginning, before ever the earth existed. So she existed before even the earth came about, as it says in verse 23. She was right there with the Father and the Son, helping, helping them concerning the whole creation. Verse 24, when there were no deeps, I was brought forth, when there were no fountains lined with water. Verse 25, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. Verse 26, while as yet he, the Most High, had not made the land or the fields or the first of the dust of the earth. Adam? Not sure. Verse 27. When he prepared the heavens, I, wisdom, the mother spirit, was there. When he, the father, drew a circle upon the face of the deep and stretched out the firmament over it. So she was right there with the father and his son, Yeshua, Helping them prepare the heavens. Amen. And as it says in verse 26, go back one verse, she was there before the lands and the fields were made, or even the first of the dust of the earth. Who was made out of the dust of the earth? Adam. Verse 28, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep. Verse 29, when he gave to the sea its limits in his decree, that the water should not transgress, cross the boundary set by the Father's command, when the Father appointed the foundations of the earth. Verse 30, Then I, the Mother Spirit Wisdom, was beside the Heavenly Father as a master and director of the work, His work, and she was daily His delight, rejoicing before Him always. So again, verse 30 says that wisdom, the mother spirit, was beside the heavenly father as a master and director of his work. She was an administrator helping in creation, as I said previously. And he was delighted by her. Verse 31, rejoicing she was in his, the father's inhabited earth, and delighting in the sons of men. Verse 32, now therefore listen to me, O you sons, for blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied are those who keep my ways. Verse 33, hear instruction and be wise, and do not refuse or neglect it. Verse 34, blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. Verse 35, for whoever finds me... The mother spirit wisdom finds life and draws forth and obtains favor from the Savior. But, verse 36, but those who miss her or sin against her wrong and injure themselves. All who hate her love and court death. Remember, the unpardonable sin, don't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the mother spirit. So it's basically like talking back to your mother 
ignoring her, not listening to her, same thing, not believing what she has to say. That's one of the, the unpardonable sin. Why? Because she's the mother spirit. You know? She's the embodiment of love. So that's it for this video. And in the next one, I want to go over the Apocrypha, and particularly the book of Ecclesiasticus, and wisdom. And I'm going to show my viewers that it lines up perfectly with what it says here in the Canon Bible, in this book of Proverbs, these couple of chapters I went over. But of course, you know, the Protestants like to say that it's not inspired. And one of the reasons they say that is not only because they're ignorant, but some of them do know what's up. And they don't want you to know this because remember in the church, in the synagogues, these uh, denominations, which are nothing more than divisions, they want, they want you to believe that the Holy Spirit is a he. And think about how perverse that is. So you have the God, the Father, the Son, and another he? That makes no sense. What about here on earth? You ever ask yourself, where, where did the origin of a family come from? Well, it came from heaven. Mom, dad, and the child. But they want to pervert that. I don't know if they plan on controlling the women. You know, I think that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to probably control, make them, you know, kind of push the women to the side because, you know, say they don't have a role unless the man says otherwise. But they always had a role from the beginning. Even though the Holy Spirit never existed on its own, it's the embodiment of God's love in female form. Just like I said, the same way uh, Eve was pulled out of Adam. Same thing with the Father. But they want to pervert that and say, no, you got three male divinities. That's just perversion. And these divisions, denominations, these uh, churches, man-made temples which you are the temple, your body is the temple of God. They want to twist everything upside down and just to control the women and pervert everything. But this is the truth, and I'm going to prove it. The Apocrypha is very much inspired. It, it lines up perfectly with, with what I'm going over in this book of Proverbs that's in the canon. And until then... Oh, and yeah, I'm going to go over that... Uh, uh, chapter in the book of John chapter 14 and verse 26 where it describes the Holy Spirit as a he and I'm going to look up that word he in the Greek and I'm going to prove that that word he is really nothing more than a front a cover for something else a, the deeper, a deeper meaning or another word so to speak so until then I hope you are all well stay blessed and see you in the next video Shalom, peace